Yeah, I'll just pray for Matt before he starts. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Father, I thank you for Matt, and I thank you that um, yeah, he's here today, and he's ready to be vulnerable and open and hear from you. And God, I ask that you would make him a vessel so that your word would just speak through him now. Father, would you just get rid of any fear and fill him with your confidence, Father? Amen. Amen. Well, I needed that prayer. How are you all doing? You all all right? Yeah? Yeah? We're okay? Yeah, great. Happy days. Um, So, I thought I'd just give a little bit about me, a little bit about what what I'm all about, because it's helpful to know where I'm coming from when I'm talking about spiritual gifts. And it's a slightly strange one, spiritual gifts. And, and I'm just going to say from the beginning that I don't know all the answers, that I, I don't know everything about spiritual gifts. Um, I'm going to hopefully shed a, a couple of lights on different things, um, hopefully uh, share some, uh, some wisdom with you guys and, and um, help you kind of know what spiritual gifts are, um, help you identify what they are in your life, but also um, help you kind of activate them within yourself. So I want to boosh, kick some of those myths that are stopping you from experiencing the gifts of the Spirit. Um, but actually, like I said, I don't, I don't know everything. <laughs> and I'm not going to pretend like I know everything. But what I, what I do know is that I'm, I give my all to my faith. I give my all to be, becoming more like Jesus. And I'm a real trier, and I'm never going to stop. And I want my life to be completely changed, consumed by, by who Jesus is, by the Holy Spirit. And I, and I know that I'm going to be someone that is changed and transformed to then go out and change and transform Bristol. Uh, and that's what I'm all about. So although I'm, I'm, I might not share some stuff that's new to some of you, I know a lot of you know a lot more than me. Um, but hopefully it's going to inspire, hopefully it's going to um, help some of you guys out. And, and it's going to be a good evening. Are you on board? Yeah. Great. Happy days. So, I want to share a bit of my experience, um, because it's helpful to know experiences, but um, for those of you that like the Bible, anyone who likes the Bible? Okay, there's a few of you. Great. I'm going to go straight in with um, the passage that we're, we're looking at today. And like Joey said, we're looking at um, spiritual gifts, and the classic verse about spiritual gifts, what is it? 1 Corinthians 12, come on. Is it, um, Kezia, how's the old uh, PowerPoint looking? Yes, okay, so let me start reading. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one who can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Pause there. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Have you been filled? If you can say that Jesus is Lord, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Happy days. Continuing. (laughs) There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And I want to pause there again. So there's a really clear distinction that is, um, that's made in this verse. And that's the difference between natural gifts and supernatural gifts. Now, what I love about the, the Holy Spirit, and that's God, um, God's power, God's kind of energy, God um, uh, with us right now, God in us right now. Um, what I love is that um, he, he confirms our identity. He confirms who we are. <laughs> And what that means is that we then know the giftings within inside us, and those are the natural gifts we've got. And that could be things like encouragement. I'm a great encourager. That could be good looks. Um, that's not me at all. Um, that could be um, uh, singing. You see people, the, the guys up here, April and Tim, incredible singing voice, incredible natural gifts. That could be the um, gift of teaching. And in Romans 12, there's a, a whole kind of section. I'd encourage you to read it. It just goes through these natural giftings that we are given um, by God. And, and just in, in being created by God, we have those gifts within us. And, and those intertwined with the Holy Spirit, with the living God, means that, um, that those things can be like, almost like sacrifices back to God. And so our gifts, our natural gifts that we've got, we give back to God. And, and what that looks like is, is by loving people. 
by serving people, by, by looking outwards, by using our gifts to bless other people. But actually, those aren't the gifts that we're going to be talking about this evening. And I want to make that distinction really clear from the beginning, that actually what we're going to be talking about is supernatural gifts of the Spirit. And that's what we're going to come on to next. And if we continue through that verse now, here they all are. It says, To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by means of the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. It's exciting stuff, isn't it? Receiving gifts. And I, and I love that, that we have a God who wants to give us gifts. A, a God who, wants, who loves us so much that he wants to, to pour out all of himself and all these supernatural things that actually don't, don't normally happen in our, in our world. And it's, it's exciting that we've got a God who wants to give us these things. But lots of people ask me, what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? What, what does it actually mean? What does it look like? What's it all about? And I had an experience, I had an experience last week when I was filling up my car with petrol. And I've never done this before. I filled up my car with petrol, but I've never filled it completely up to the top. And so what I did was I, I shoved that little, what's that thing? the nozzle into the petrol hole. Um, it's technical terms, so if you lost me, I'm sorry. Um, but the nozzle went in the hole, and I squeezed the handle, uh, and the, the petrol started flowing in. And I thought that my petrol thing would stop <laughs> when it was full. <laughs> but it didn't, it carried on going. <laughs> and it spilled out all over the place. And I made a real mess. And over the tannoy here, man, it's... <laughs> Man at pump number six, what are you doing? <laughs> and, <laughs> and his petrol was flooding, <laughs> was flooding all over out of my car, all over uh, the petrol forecourt. And, um, <laughs> and I just held it up and I said, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it was a mess, don't do that. It doesn't click, it doesn't just automatically stop. But I think that's what it looks like to be, to be filled with the Spirit. I think that's what it looks like to be filled. Is it... We know that something is filled by, by what, comes, what overflows, by what comes out of it. When I'm filling up a cup, it's not full until water starts trickling over the edge. And I love a meniscus. Anyone else love a meniscus? Yeah, oh, come on, meniscus. Um, but that's what it actually says in... in when we receive the, the Spirit, that's actually what happens is that um, for us, we don't have a petrol hole, we've, we've got a mouth. <laughs> and when we're filled with the Spirit, it <laughs> when we're filled with the Spirit, it, it, stuff's naturally going to come out. Stuff's naturally going to bubble out of our mouths. And, and, and I think that's how we know that we're, we're filled with the Spirit, by how we, how we speak, how we talk, how we act. How do we know that we're full of of humor. We laugh. How do we know that we're, we're full of fear? We scream, cry. <laughs> How do you know that we're filled with spirits? Well, what comes out of our mouth is different. What comes out of our mouth is, is, is I think, the, the gifts of the spirit. And we see all these gifts that I mentioned before, the gifts of words of wisdom that's um, kind of supernaturally without, um, you shouldn't know what's going on, but you have a, just in your mind comes a, a word of wisdom that you shouldn't know that, you, that speaks into a situation that, that gives something of God. A, a word of knowledge is um, when you, you hear something from God that you shouldn't know about someone else. Do you ever get that? We just suddenly, you, you hear a Bible verse, you, it just pops into your mind and it's, it reminds you of this person. I, I had that not, not long ago where I was um, just having a go at this, this kind of words of knowledge and I just say, God, what, what Bible character is this person? 
Uh, and a Bible character popped into my head. And, and I just sort of said to this person, this is the Bible character that popped into my head. And here's the situation this, this Bible character was going through. Here's what was happening. Does that ring true with you at all? Uh, and he said, yes. <laughs> That's literally what, what's, what I'm going through at the moment. That's literally um, my history. That's literally where I am now. And, and I was able to say, well, the, the next step of the story was da-da-da. And it was, it, I shouldn't have known that. I shouldn't have known it. But, but there was something of the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit was inside me that just came out. It just came out. Other gifts, gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, gifts of faith, gifts of distinguishing between spirits, um, gifts of tongues, gifts of interpreting of those tongues. Oh, wasn't Amy's story great? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and, and I don't know what you think. I, I, wanna, I could talk about all these, all these different gifts. I could go into loads of detail, but we don't really have time. Uh, and so I just wanted to pick on a, a couple of gifts, uh, actually one in particular that I think um, that God's just been highlighting to me that, that I think could unlock quite a few spiritual gifts for a lot of us. Uh, and it could be a, a bit of a breakthrough for, for some of us, and that's around the gifts of tongues. I wonder how many people here have, have spoken in tongues before? Give me a little show of hands if you have. Okay, so there's, there's quite a few people here that have, and, and it's a really kind of, it's a unique gift. It's a, it's a, a peculiar thing where, where we, we speak, and it's like we're, we're speaking different languages, and, and in the world there's 6,000 languages. It's a lot of languages. And, and Amy's example was that she just, from nowhere, started speaking Swahili. How does that happen? <laughs> but actually the Bible says we'll, we'll speak many languages of man, but also languages of angels. And I don't know how many different languages there are in kind of angelism. And, and I've, I've got no idea how many languages there, there are, but, but everyone is, is unique. And, and you hear it at the front. And I remember when I was a, a child growing up in church and, and someone would, would speak tongues and it's like a bubbling up of what, what's inside and the, the spirit coming out and it's like the deepness within someone speaking to the deep of, of God. And, and I thought that sounds like someone's going, we poo, we poo, we poo, we poo, we poo, we poo. And it's, uh, that's not it. It's not babbling. <laughs> It's, a, it's not babbling. It's not um, kind of made up words. It's, it's, it's actually a language. It's actually a language coming up, speaking from the deep into the deep of what, um, what God is. And I'm a really practical guy. <laughs> and actually, um, my last birthday, um, Abby, who I'm actually getting married to soon. <laughs> oh. Man, it's crazy. But, but she asked me, what do you want for your birthday? What gift can I get you? And, um, and I'm super practical. And, and so what I said was, can you get me a, a, a bin? <laughs> I really want a bin because um, <laughs> my bin's rubbish. And I need to put more rubbish in it. And I need something that's good. And she was like, no, <laughs> I'm not going to get you a bin. But in, in my mind, gifts have to be practical. They have to be something that um, can be used. And, and for a long time, if I could speak from my own experience, I didn't really get what tongues was about. I didn't really get what it was all about. So I can see with all the other gifts that there's a practicalness to them. Gifts of healing, practical. Going out, seeing someone's life being changed, seeing someone being healed. Gifts of words of knowledge, words of wisdom. Or you see those impacting people's lives, but what's, what's tongues all about? What's going on there? And so just, I want to kind of debunk a few of the myths around tongues because I think it's a really interesting gift uh, and like I said I think that actually it could potentially be a gift that unlocks a, a lot of other gifts uh, and it could be a, a gateway for a lot of people to, to the, the rest of the gifts of the spirit and and so I just want to share my experience of of speaking in tongues 
And, and I think we often have this idea that uh, we, we read in the, in the Bible that uh, in Acts 2, the spirit fell on people and then they, uh, on the disciples, and they suddenly started speaking in all sorts of different languages. Uh, and we have this idea that tongues is, well, I sit here, I pray, God, give me tongues. And then all of a sudden, like a ventriloquist dummy, we're speaking tongues. <laughs> And I had that idea, I had that, that thought in my head that it's, God, fill me with, fill me with your spirit so that I, I start speaking tongues and I sat and waited <laughs> and nothing happened. <laughs> but actually, I don't, think that's the, I don't think that's how it works. And, and like with the other gifts, I think there's a cooperation with God. I think we, we cooperate with the Holy Spirit and what we do in that cooperation is actually we've got to start speaking. We've got to start praying. And then, then God, the Bible says God gives us utterances. God gives us the, the words, the, the stuff that comes uh, from deep inside when we, when we can't think of what to say next, when we, we don't know how, what else to say. God gives us those words. God gives us those tongues. And that was my my experience was I just started speaking, I just started saying uh, and worshipping and just saying, God, this is what I think of you, this is how great I think you are, and, and I just carried on going, 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 until all of a sudden, something else was coming out. <laughs> Other words were coming out, and it was this incredible, intimate moment between me and God. An incredible gift. An incredible gift that this, this moment right there, right now, was something with it deep within me speaking to deep within God. What a gift. But I think it does more than just build me up and encourage me. I think that actually what it does is it, is it breaks down barriers around what we think of the spiritual realm, the spiritual dimension. And because we read in the Bible that Jesus interacts with angels, with demons, with spirits, we read all of that and we sort of, some of us kind of nominally sort of agree, yeah, that's, that was going on, that was happening, but I don't know how much of it we actually engage with in regular life. How much of it do we actually, do we actually believe that that's going on? And what we're, what we're talking about here with spiritual gifts is actually, it's stuff that doesn't naturally come to us. It doesn't naturally make sense for us, and especially in our society, and our culture, that is so empirical, it's so measurable, it's so kind of experiential with our five senses of what I can see, taste, touch, uh, hear, whatever, smell. It's, we limit ourselves to those sort of worldly things. But, but what happens when we speak in tongues that opens up the idea that this is, there's more out there? There's more out there. And so later on this evening, or once I've finished uh, talking, we're going to have a time where, where we're going to invite you up to the front. And actually, throughout the whole of this service, um, we've invited people to come forward if you want to receive the Holy Spirit again. And my prayer through the whole of this week has been that, that when you come forward to receive the Holy Spirit again, to be filled with the Holy Spirit again, you'll be given the gift of tongues. And what that means is that you will actually have to cooperate with that. You will actually have to start speaking out. But I believe that when we start opening ourselves up to to the Holy Spirit, that then other things flow out of that, other things come out of that. It's, It's like everything else starts making sense. But I'm also so aware that when we start talking about spiritual gifts, that it's actually a really tough topic for a lot of people. And that, that Bible verse that we read out, it says, eagerly desire these gifts. And I'm so aware that so many people here have been eagerly desiring gifts. And they've been pushing hard, they've been pushing hard, and you've been trying, you've been praying and praying and saying, God, I want to kind of operate in these gifts, but, but nothing's happened. But nothing's happened. And it's this real tension that we, we battle with between these gifts are for everyone. All these gifts are for everyone. But at the same time, these gifts seem to be for a few. And I don't know if I could fully speak into that situation and speak into that tension, because naturally, who I am, I'm an optimistic guy. And I just carry on going. 
and I just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. And, and there have been a whole load of times where just nothing's happened. Where I haven't uh, been kind of working in the spiritual gifts, those things that are available to all of us when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. I haven't been there. And, and I always say that, that the time that I peaked my, my healing ministry... <laughs> Um, was when I was uh, when I was three years old. I was um, in my uh, uh, my dad was holding me, and um, and he tells the story a lot better than me because uh, I don't remember. Um, but he was holding me, and someone asked him, um, "How are you feeling, Tim?" And and he said, "Actually, my shoulder's feeling really sore." And little old me, I said, "Shoulder be better." Thank you, Jesus. And and the shoulder was better. And it didn't hurt anymore. <laughs> um, but let me tell you, it was probably about 20 years since something <laughs> until something happened next. And that's how it was. And I wonder how many people have that same experience where they had one minute. They have the, the high of being able to pray for someone to be healed. They were healed, but nothing's happened ever since. I wonder if you're in that place, that kind of dry place that's, that you know there's, there's gifts there. You know it's for everyone. It says it in the Bible, it's for everyone. But you're not there. And it is really difficult. And, and like I say, I'm, I'm an optimistic guy, so I just carry on pushing through, but I know that's not the case for everyone. And it's not easy. But there are a few little things in my, my small amount of time, my small amount of experience. There's a few helpful things. I think they're, they're general helpful things. They're biblical helpful things that will, will hopefully could kind of reignite those sort of, sort of gifts. And, and, and the first one is take risks. And it's sometimes, it's actually the hardest place to take risks when we're feeling down and out, when we're feeling disqualified, when we're feeling we're not, we're not there. It's the hardest place to take risks. But let me tell you, the times when I've had actual breakthrough is when I've taken risks, and when I've stepped out. And one example of that was actually not very long ago. Um, I, um, I flew out to Florida with Steve Ballard. And... Um, there was this conference that was going on. I think some of you know the stories already, but they're, they're super encouraging. So I'm just going to tell them again, if that's okay. Um, but we, we flew out to this conference in Florida. Um, and we, we booked the flights like a week before. Um, and we flew out for about 30 hours. <laughs> it was a really short trip. Um, but it, was, it wasn't just that I want to have a little jolly over in Florida. It was I felt stirred within me to start taking risks. And I felt stirred within me that there's more, there's more available for me. There's more that, that I can tap into. There's more of the spirit that wants to do stuff in me and around me. And going out to this conference, there were um, thousands and thousands of people filled this stadium. Um, and it was, it was all around um, a war on inaction. What a title. <laughs> And for me, that really touched something deep, and I was like, oh, I want that. I want action. Let's start a war, um, a good war. Um, and, um, and so we went out, and there was all these gifts going on. There's all sorts of stuff flying about. There was um, people were, were praying in tongues. People were, um, were being healed. People were um, giving words of knowledge, words of wisdom. Um, there was um, this crazy kind of miraculous time when um, one of the people that's leading worship just started singing um, heaven come down like rain and it started raining <laughs> and then stopped singing and then the rain stopped <laughs> and, uh, and uh, another occasion where um, someone from the front said that I, I believe there's, there's someone, there's groups of people here that are suffering with um, depression and, uh, and a physical sign of your um, depression is that you've been self-harming, you've got scars uh, up your arms. And, and um, what we want to do now is say that um, we want to pray that you'll be healed. Uh, but more than that, we want to pray that a sign of you being healed is that the scars will disappear on your arms. And, and so what, what everyone did is everyone stood up every, and the people that were... Um, uh, that were suffering it put their hands on their scars and and after three everyone there all these thousands of people just shouted out Jesus 
just shout out the name of Jesus. And, and there was a person, I'm a real people watcher, and there was a person two seats to the left of me who I saw stand up, who I saw scars on her arms, who I saw put her hands on her arms. And after shouting out the name of Jesus, removed her hands and her scars were gone. And I saw that in front of my eyes. And, and I know that doesn't happen for everyone. I know it's, it, that's a, a really kind of a special moment. And I know that's not going on all the time. And I know that's, that's actually probably quite difficult for some people to hear. But, but for me, that was coming back here to Bristol. I, was, I came back fired up. I came back ready. I came back with my sleeves rolled up. And I just took risks. And I have been taking risks ever since and, and reaching out and, and, and actually speaking. I think there's something so important with just speaking. And so some of you know that I work for, uh, for Food Bank. And, and for me, that's been like my playground, really. <laughs> and I've been people turning up from a, a Food Bank in just desperate, desperate situations, really hopeless situations, in real crisis, in real need. And, and we can help them with, uh, with physical things. But, but actually, more than that, I know that I'm carrying the love of Jesus that changes people's lives, that brings hope, that brings peace. And, and I know that God wants to intervene in their lives and, and see their lives being turned around. Uh, and so for me, I'm, I'm able to, I'm just to go for it. Uh, and there'll be times when I'll have um, words of knowledge where I shouldn't know what's going on in someone's situation. But it just, it, it comes into my head, this kind of Bible verses, or, um, and I just take a risk. I just speak things, and, and what's happening is people's lives are being changed. People's lives are being changed, and, and it doesn't happen all the time, but I carry on going, and I keep on going. And, and this, is, this is what I want to say, is that we've got to take risks, and we've got to actually speak things out. If you get that inkling, if you walk into an office and you suddenly get a Bible verse, and you think, that's for that person, say it. What's the worst that can happen? If you suddenly are in a, in a, in a meeting and, you, and you, you get kind of a, a word of wisdom, you've got kind of some wise words saying, you're like, where's that come from? I don't quite get where that is. Just try it. See what happens. For your neighbors, for uh, your family, for that, your brother or sister you haven't spoken to in years, reach out to them. But here's the, the final thing that, that I want to say. And, and what I want to say is that, um, that I think that there might be some people here who feel inadequate, who feel like when they hear about spiritual gifts, they think, that can't be me. I'm not perfect. I'm not sorted. I, I, and you disqualify yourself. And I just want to encourage you by saying that these gifts, they don't rely on qualifications. They don't rely on how good you are, how bad you are, how new to faith you are, how old to faith you are, what you've done in the past, what you're going to do in the future. It, 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 these gifts are, are grace gifts. And what that means is that they are freely given. And it's not like scouts where we get a big old sash and we start kind of sewing in prophecy badge or healing badge and, and we get to become like chief scout. It's not like that at all. These gifts are freely given. They're freely given and they don't need to be earned. So if you're feeling tonight like you, you're disqualifying yourself, you're counting yourself out, let me just say that these gifts are for everyone and I believe that they're for you as well. I think I, I, I might finish there, if that's all right. Uh, we're going to have a time now where if you want to be filled with the Spirit, if you want to, I believe, receive some of these gifts, and, and I know I haven't gone into lots of detail about lots of these, but, but I just really encourage you as we go into this, this next stage now and uh, to come forward. And uh, we've been doing this, this all, all through this series that we've been encouraging people to, to come to the front to receive the Holy Spirit. And, and why we do that is because it takes a risk. Sometimes it takes a risk. And it's actually a really big risk. I, I know that it's, it's a risk for me 
to actually get up out of my seat and go to the front. It's a risk. But what I truly believe is that when you come forward, that you will receive the Holy Spirit. You will receive God's Spirit, which will be in you, empowering you, um, encouraging you. um, And he will fill you to change the situations in your lives, to see your lives being transformed, actually to see creation being renewed, actually to see God's kingdom coming. And that's where we're heading into now. If, any, if you want any of this, if you want to come and be filled, just come forward to the front. But as we were praying beforehand in that little side chapel, um, Kat just had a word that she, that she wanted to share. And I wonder if she's around now. Come on up, Kat. Thank you. Um, uh, I led uh, worship at the women's conference yesterday, um, which is the first time I led worship in quite a long time. There was a time in my life where I was leading worship every week, and I put that away. And um, I thought uh, maybe I was going to struggle, and it wasn't going to be very good, and uh, maybe uh, I was going to fail because I'd put something away that God had given to me. And maybe it wasn't there anymore, or maybe it had gone off like milk in the fridge because I'd left it there and I hadn't used it. And God showed me a picture of uh, me rummaging in a wardrobe, (laughs) um, finding at the back a box. And in there, a, a beautiful necklace that he gave me. And it was in great condition because it was made by him, so <laughs> it didn't rust. Certainly hadn't gone sour. Uh, and so I just put it on. And what I feel I wanted to share with you is um, if you feel like God gave you something one time, it might have been a few months ago, it might have been years ago, and he gave something to you, a spiritual gift not a natural gift. I want to be clear about that because I'm a musician. That's what I do all day, every day. And I'm very grateful to God for what he's given me in that. But worship leading is a spiritual thing and it has a very different quality. So I want you to think now, if you feel that God gave you a spiritual gift, which you maybe you used, maybe you didn't, and you put it away, I just want to tell you that God didn't take it back. If you give something to a child and they put it in a cupboard, you don't go into their room and take it away. You permit them to put it in the cupboard and you hope they'll take it out and enjoy it. That's what God is like with what he's given to you. He hasn't taken it back. It's still there. And he's not going, oh, I can't believe you just put that in the cupboard. And also... I reiterate this, because God made that, he gave it to you, it is in perfect condition. It's beautiful because it was made by God. It wasn't made of flesh. It wasn't made of this world. It was made by him. It's in immaculate condition. And as you take it out and you put it on, it beautifies you, if I could put it like that, just as it was always intended to do just as it did when you used it first, if you did. And it's not because of anything that you're doing. All you're doing is accepting the gift and putting it on. So please don't disqualify yourself and think, I let that go, it's gone. God's taken it away. Or don't think that gift has gone rotten. It's gone stale and it's disintegrated. That's a lie. It's perfect. And God is delighted when you rummage into that cupboard and take it out again. Could this be for me? It was always for you. Take it out. Put it on. You're still worthy. You're still deserving of that gift because it was never given for your merit. It was given from his grace because of how much he loves you. That's why he's not going to take it. So have courage and rustle rustle to the back, take it out, put it on. Thank you, Kat. (laughs) 
So we're going to go back into worship now. Uh, and if what Kat said has really rung true with you, if it's kind of resonated within you, then I'd really encourage you especially to come forward. But I think also if, if um, tongues is something that you um, either you used to kind of use a lot or if something that you really want, I, I just want to also encourage you especially um, to come forward um, and to receive. Um, and so we're going to go into a time now of just um, receiving from the Holy Spirit. So I'd really encourage you to, to come forward um, and we're going to kind of wait for the Holy Spirit to fill us. But there's also going to be a team of people that are going around um, and laying on hands as well. Um, so do come on forwards. <laughs> 